Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this journey looking at our cultural heritage in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Culture is the way of life of a people. So, Vincentian culture is the way of life of Vincentians. It includes all elements of how we live, such as the way we talk, the foods we eat, our building construction styles, our expression of song and movement, our worship forms, how we dress, the traditions we keep, the stories and places that we hold as important. It is very extensive. In some ways, we live like other peoples. In some ways, we are unique. Our culture has been shaped by the influence of the various people who have lived on these islands and their patterns of life. Amerindians, Europeans, Africans, Asians have all contributed to our heritage. Heritage being those tangible and intangible cultural forms and influences that we have inherited from our foreparents. To start our journey, we look at the persons who were first here. Doc Edgar Adams tells us in his book, St. Vincent in the History of the Carib Nation, that the Caribs canoed their way back and forth throughout all these islands of the southern Caribbean chain for hundreds of years before the Europeans found their way here. He identifies St. Vincent as a major headquarters of the Caribs. Dr. Ivan Van Sertema, in his book, They Came Before Columbus, speaks of the explorations by African seamen from Mali who sailed west from Africa but never returned. It is concluded that they ended up on the Caribbean islands and may have even got to the continental Americas. It is easy to conjecture that Europeans meeting descendants of these sailors living an Amerindian lifestyle would consider them black Caribs. Of greatest importance is the attitude of the Europeans to the Amerindian people they met living in these islands. The Amerindians were considered lesser than the Europeans who then entering this part of the world. By force of arms, the Amerindians were dispossessed of their lands. As a people, they were virtually wiped out. In the case of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, when the island was conquered, our ancestors were exiled. Their resilience allowed for the retention of our Amerindian heritage in new lands on Central America, in countries such as Honduras, Guatemala and Belize. UNESCO has declared the Garifuna culture a masterpiece of the world's intangible heritage. This declaration is for heritage birthed here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The next stop in our history looks at the reshaping of our country by the English, the European country that attained final ownership. Having conquered the French in one of the many European wars of the time, SVG was given by treaty to England. As their planters took up residence and farmed the estates they created, the crown had to send in governmental structure. Over time, the laws of the land, the educational system, and the formal religious support that grew with the colony was all modeled on the structures operational in England. When, in 1834, slavery was abolished, there began to be efforts to moderate and later improved the circumstances of the majority of the people, the Africans. These changes eventually saw the development of political parties, and again the institutions were patterned after what was operational in England. The period following the end of slavery was a time that saw new people come to the island. Indentured labor came from India, which was another colony of England. But persons also came from Ireland and Madeira and elsewhere. They brought additional cultural influences so that SVG ended up with its special mix of Amerindian, French, English, African, East Indian and later New European citizens. In 1935, riots in the country led to further reform and eventually to adult suffrage, one man, one vote. 
With growth in the political arena came challenge to the English control of the island. And spurred by changes in economic fortune and encouraged by English social review, St. Vincent and the Grenadines became independent in 1979. However, our justice system, our governance, our education, and even the financial ties that had been shaped were influence and reflective of Britain. The period following independence saw our social eyes turn to North America, and we have let ourselves be culturally influenced by them since. In summary, colonization created a country with European legal system, multiracial population, and a culture formed as a result of mixing these many influences. Of significance for St. Vincent and the Grenadines was the way the subjugation of its indigenous people ended with the exile of those black Caribs, Garifuna, who could be caught. The action of exile and its impact on the remaining population removed from Vincentian culture major elements of its indigenous heritage, especially language, worship, food preparation, and dance. Also of significance is the fact that resistance by the Black Caribs deterred the settlement of SVG by the Europeans and kept slavery from being widespread in St. Vincent and the Grenadines until after 1797. This resulted in a shorter period of African slavery for SVG. We shall never ever surrender our independence, our sovereignty, nor our liberty. I turn now to a few areas of cultural observation. Look at dress. One of the first visually distinctive features of a culture that a foreigner would likely note is some unusual dress style. The Scots have their kilt, but still, Europeans were startled by the semi-nakedness of indigenous people in tropical climes. SVG does not have a national dress. This is a matter that is under review. However, we generally dress in standard Western styles. Language. Probably the next distinctive feature is language. SVG is officially an English-speaking country. We have our particular accent, and we also use a dialect that, although English-based, contains words rooted in various African languages, as well as words of French origin. Grammatically, our dialect strays away from standard English form. Worship. St. Vincent and the Grenadines is a Christian country. The main denominations are Anglican, Pentecostal, Evangelical, Methodist, Catholics, and members of the Salvation Army. In very recent time, a few Muslims have become noticeable in the population, but there is no mosque in St. Vincent. Spiritual Baptists are very numerous, and there are a small grouping of Rastafarians. Food. While there is a strong consumption of hard food, ground provision, yam, dasheen, edos, green bananas, the major part of the Vincentian diet is quite Western. White rice, bread, cakes of wheat flour, pasta, meat of fowl, sheep, goat, cattle along with fish. Other seafood are eaten mostly as delicacies. I turn to our traditions and festivals. The Vincentian culture begins to distinguish itself from others when we look at the traditions and festivals. The first marker is that the Vincentian society is very welcoming and naturally friendly. It's not a trained tourism welcome. There is a genuine concern and interest to help the foreigner. But not only the foreigner, we also help our own. The most unique tradition that has been harnessed into a festival is nine mornings. On the nine mornings before Christmas, the society has become accustomed to awaking early, 4 a.m. or so, to sing and street walk and pray and participate in games. This tradition has been formalized with community concert, street games, and of course, community square themed lighting Christmas displays that have made it into the Christmas Nine Mornings Festival. Like many other countries with Catholic influence of Lenten celebrations, St. Vincent and the Grenadines has a carnival. For tourism purposes, our carnival was detached from Lenten celebrations and Vinci Mass, as it is called, is now presented at the last weekend of June and the first weekend of July. 
The cultural calendar of SVG has events happening in every month of the year. In January, we have film, fine art, and fashion. It's a traveling exercise for exposing school children to the arts. In February, we have PRISPAF, the Primary School Performing Arts Festival. It's a talent search exercise. March is Heritage Month, the time for celebrating the indigenous people and our first national hero. April brings Gospel Festival and also the Easter Val celebration of Union Island. Then May brings us into Carnival preparations. It is also the time for remembering African liberation. And June sees the rural carnival celebrations. And finally, the first weekend of July sees the urban program. August is Emancipation Month, and we remember especially our African heritage. September is a focus on dance. October is the month in which we became an independent country. November is our drama season, and December brings us the Christmas Nine Mornings Festival. That list is not exhaustive. There's the Beckway Easter Regatta, the Canawan Whitsuntide Regatta, Maroon festivities in Union Island, the East Indian Arrival Day, and all the private promotional programming and entertainments. Woven in all these is creative musical mastery that is distinctive and special. No look at culture is complete without speaking of sports and games. The biggest general participant sport is football. However, the fan base for international cricket and local cricket is very strong and the passion for the West Indies cricket team is still a hot fire in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Among the children, some of the traditional games still find expression. We play marbles and jacks and hopscotch, as still seen in the schoolyards from time to time. However, the presence of electronic entertainment is taking our children quickly away from physical activity. Martial arts of karate and taekwondo are attracting interest, while basketball, netball, volleyball, along with lawn and table tennis have followings. The fans and players of dominoes and drafts can be found in every corner and every outdoor social picnic gathering. The stone markings or petroglyphs which are found all over this island seem to be scarce on other islands. Recent discussions on intellectual property suggest we should use these as geographical markers of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and maintain them as part of the Vinci brand marketing. It would be best to have them protected for use by Vincentian companies and citizens to mark locally made products. But also most noteworthy among the elements of the country is the St. Vincent Botanic Gardens, which was founded in 1765, making it the oldest such in the Western Hemisphere. The Botanic Garden supports a breeding program for the Amazona gildingi, the Vinci parrot, which is unique to St. Vincent and the Grenadines and was near extinction. Through the breeding program, the gardens has played a significant role in recent avian history by saving the Vincentian parrot from extinction. The gardens also played another significant role, this time in the plant history of the Western world. For it was in 1793 that it received breadfruit plants that Captain William Bly, who had survived the mutiny on his ship, the Bounty, had previously been unable to secure. Plants were tended here and distributed across the western tropics, particularly the Caribbean islands. The whaling traditions for both sperm whale and pilot whale have left distinctive songs in our folk singing, our boat building and our storytelling. Whaling continues today, still using the 17th century forms and style with small eight-person boats rowed out to sighted whales. And they catch only one or two sperm whales in any given year. And in many years, we catch none. The Grenadine Islands are an important aspect of our nation. These islands provide the majority of seafarers from our country. They also retain unique drumming patterns with the big drum dance and maroon feasts giving special distinction to our cultural heritage. Heritage has marked our island in other ways as well. We've already mentioned the multiracial nature of the population. One of the outcomes of this is that when combined with the small size of the population, there has been little retention of the cultural markers that divide. And so, today, a Vincentian whose ancestry is East Indian is as willing to embrace Joseph Chateauier as national hero as is a Vincentian of indigenous ancestry 
and the Vincentian of European ancestry. In the area of architecture and landmarks, first mention should be to the various petroglyphs, especially the very large one at Liu and the cave markings at Bukament. The government house at the top of the Botanic Gardens has such style and history that it has been given protected heritage status. We mark the passing of our first national hero with a simple obelisk. And remember, by leaving it untouched, the work of slaves and European engineers in the Black Point Tunnel. It is easy for me to say that our culture exists. Our people live it, and so they don't see it unless it is specifically brought to their attention, or unless they travel outside the country and, in experiencing another culture, comparatively come to the realization that we do have one. As an example, our music and reggae and soca that we give to the Caribbean can also be given to the world. In St. Vincent and the Grenadines, culture is so often thought of only in entertainments, drama, song, drumming and dance, that often the full richness of what is ours is not appreciated, celebrated or honored. Oh.